In this tutorial, we're gonna be taking a look at static website generation. So typically, when it comes to static site generation, what's happening is you are creating some kind of website in say Markdown or ASCII doc or some other format, and you are transpiling or compiling it into just static HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Now this is an alternative to using sites or services like WordPress, Drupal, or similar. Now, when it comes to static site generation, you're not using a database. You are compiling strictly to, like I said, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. So you get huge performance value and it's actually very cheap to host in the end. So when it comes to static site generators, Hugo is my personal preference. There are other popular generators, say for example, Jekyll or Eleven D, maybe even Viewpress. There's quite a few. Hugo is actually written in Go. It's very fast. To me, it's very easy to use. Knowing that it's written in Go, doesn't mean anything. You don't have to know Go to know how to use Hugo, um, but we're going to see how to actually use it and get started. So this is more of an introduction tutorial. So if you are already a Hugo user and are looking for something more advanced, you might want to take a look at some of my other content. This, we're just going to get up and running and, and see how easy it is to get started when it comes to Hugo. So I am on the Hugo website. If this is your first time using Hugo, you will need to install it. You can download the binaries for your operating system or you can use a package manager. So for example, on Windows, you can actually use Chocolaty. So Chocolaty, what you would want to do is you would want to install the standard Hugo package. Now, if you want to use some of the advanced features, and this actually got me the first time when I tried to use it on Hugo, like I wanted to compile SAS, so some CSS. It's not available out of the box with the standard Hugo. Instead, what you have to do is you have to install Hugo extended if you want those extended features. Not a big deal, but it, it wasn't obvious to me the first time. If you're on a Mac, you can go ahead and install Hugo with Homebrew. That's the recommended approach. You don't need to get any kind of extended package for Homebrew. Just go ahead and use Brew install. Now, once it's installed, then you can actually start building a project. So for example, if I open up my terminal right now, what, what's happening is I'm on my desktop. I would want to create a new site. So I would say something like Hugo new site and then maybe I want to call it Raboy or Raboy's site. It doesn't really matter. So it created that directory. So if I navigate into it, it'll look something like this. So I just I just did a list of file contents of this directory and I have a few directories uh, as well as a configuration file. And this configuration file right now it's in TOML format. You could also use YAML files or JSON. So when it comes to my personal sites, I use JSON. I'm not a huge fan of Tomal, but it's totally up to you. Tomal is the default. So what we can do is we can open up this project. I'm gonna open it up in Visual Studio Code. But we can open it up and we can start exploring. So let's go ahead and click on that config.tomal file. This is what you would get out of the box when it comes to Tomal. So you would have a base URL. So this is the URL that you are planning to publish to. We're going to see that we can serve it locally as well. We want the language code and a site title. Now there's, there's a lot of other configuration that you can apply when it comes to this config.tomo file. Inside of the content directory, this is where all of your content is going to reside. So if you say Hugo and then you want to create a, a new particular blog post or static site page, it's going to end up inside of that content directory. The data directory is more for static data content. So for example, maybe you have some data that might otherwise exist in a database, but that, that data doesn't really change. It can exist as a JSON file. You would actually add it to this data directory and you can access it similar to like you would a database. The layouts, if you wanna create your own custom layout, uh, static is going to be for static images or CSS or JavaScript that doesn't really change based on the build process. And then the themes is the theme that you download. So let's go ahead and move on through this, this kind of quick start or introduction tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the terminal within Visual Studio Code. So that way uh, we don't have to jump around as much. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pick a theme. Uh, because right now if I were to try to run or build this, it's not going to go so well. So if I go back into my web browser and I say themes, I can choose one of the many themes that are available. I can also choose to build my own theme, and that's something that's kind of out of the scope of this particular tutorial. 
Well, let's go ahead and pick a theme. I'm just going to pick the first one that shows up. This is the terminal theme. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to hopefully the installation instructions. Perfect. So I have the installation instructions. So if I want to, I can just copy this command. I can go back to my Visual Studio Code and I can paste it in. So what it's doing, it's doing a git clone and it's going to add this terminal theme into my themes directory. So I'm going to hit enter. So you'll notice that I now have a terminal theme inside of my themes directory. So now what we want to do is we want to add that theme to the configuration file so that way it uses that theme because I could in theory have numerous themes in my project and I can switch between them as I please. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say theme and I'm going to say equals terminal and I'm going to save it. Now if I wanted to I can clear this so what I can do is I can say Hugo and just by saying Hugo what that's going to do is that's going to build my site. And as you can see there were errors and these errors were because the theme has certain dependencies that I did not meet. So let's go ahead and check out that theme. So the theme inside of the configuration, I didn't follow the next step in the configuration, is it wants me to add this information. Now all themes are going to be different. They're all going to have different requirements in terms of what you need to add to your configuration file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the easy route and I'm actually just going to copy everything outside of the language code and the base URL just to satisfy the theme. And we could always review it later and figure out what we can remove and what we can add. Uh, but let's go ahead and add it in. So I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to try that Hugo command once more. You'll notice that this time around it didn't throw any kind of errors. It built 14 static files and if I wanted to explore them through the built-in Hugo server I can say Hugo server or serve. And what that's going to do is it's going to serve it at localhost on port 1313. And you'll notice that this is what happens in my browser when I choose to navigate to localhost 1313. And there's really nothing here because I don't have any pages, I don't have any content, I just have that base theme. So let's go ahead and work towards actually adding some content. So if I go back into Visual Studio Code and I stop serving, what I can do is I can say Hugo new and I'm going to say posts and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to say uh, my first post. And this is going to be a markdown file and I'm going to hit enter. You'll notice that inside of my content directory it created a post directory and it created a markdown file called my first post.md. And inside of that file it's including some certain front matter information. Uh, and I have the option to fill in more information as well. Let's give it a title. I'm going to say my first post. Um, I'm not going to include anything else. Let's just see if it works out. But I am going to clear it and I'm just going to say Hugo serve again. It looks like it worked. So let's go ahead and go back into the browser and see if now we have one item. You'll see when I refreshed that I now have my first post of course there's going to be no content in there because I didn't actually add anything. So if I open up Visual Studio Code and I say hello world and save it and go back into my browser, it's already there. It's already refreshed because I'm still serving the Hugo application and it says hello world. Likewise if I went back uh, and refreshed, well this particular theme it looks like it's not showing any kind of preview content which is fine. It's on a per theme basis. Every theme behaves differently. So let's say that we want to go into our Visual Studio Code editor or whatever you're using. Different themes are going to have different front matter. So for example, this particular theme has all of this, which is fine. You can actually see what the front matter is going to add by going into your themes. And we can look at archetypes and we can look at post.md. So you'll notice that it just copied what was inside of this post.md file into any new file that has the post directory. So you'll notice that we created this my first post file inside of the post directory uh, and that's why it picked up this archetype information. Other themes are going to have different archetypes. So for example maybe there's a draft keyword here. Draft usually means that Hugo shouldn't be publishing it. 
or maybe there's a future publish date from that's in the future from now. Hugo is probably not going to publish that unless you specifically tell it to publish drafts or publish future items. So typically what you would do is you would say Hugo. You can say serve or build, uh, or not build. You can say serve if you want, uh, but I'm just going to say build drafts, and I'm going to say build future. Now, we don't have any future items, and we don't have any drafts, but in the event that your theme does have that, uh, you can go ahead and choose to do that. So that's kind of Hugo in a nutshell. Hugo is very powerful. It's very easy to use. Uh, the directory structure doesn't matter a whole lot. So for example, if I wanted to say Hugo new posts being in that post directory, if I wanted to give it kind of a URL format, so I can say 2020 and I can say 06 and then I can say my second post.md, what it's going to do is it's going to create that directory for me uh, and it's going to create this file and I can say something else and we're going to see if it actually shows up. Oops, we're going to do Hugo serve actually. I'm going to go back into my browser. I am going to go back and I'm going to refresh. Uh, you'll notice I, did, I forgot to add a title here, but it actually does have content. So even though the, the directory structure changed, I actually have two different pieces of content here. Um, so this is this is very powerful stuff. So if you want more ideas on what you can accomplish with Hugo, take, for example, the Polyglot Developer. So the Polyglot Developer in its entirety is built off of Hugo. So for example, each page inside of this menu is a Hugo page. The blog is a lot of post content, kind of like what we saw. And this is actually built on a scheduler. So there are automations behind it. So basically, I create a future publish date it will queue up inside of my build system and it'll build and publish on the dates that I choose. And this, this is a substitute. This is a step away from actually using a CMS like WordPress, which uses a database, which uses a backend web technology, which can be expensive as you begin to scale and not only expensive, but it can also slow down significantly based on the demand. Whereas this is a static website, it goes pretty much as fast as the user's web browser can handle because there isn't a whole lot of crunching going on. So I definitely re recommend checking out Hugo. It is a great utility.